Uh, greetings and welcome to our continuing series of educational rounds here at Seclair, where we attempt to bring a real-life solutions to real-life situations. My name is Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist, and today I'm joined by two of my colleagues. On my left would be... Hi, my name is Alyssa. I'm a PA student from Duquesne. And on my right... I'm Alec. I'm a PA student from Chatham. And at Seclair, what we attempt to do is we, t- uh, we, t- we treat uh, people. We do not treat diagnoses. Would that be correct, Alec? Right. So what we do is we take a holistic view of an individual. And what, uh, what, what would a holistic view? What would a holistic view encompass? The mind, body, spirit. Absolutely, for certain. So if we leave any one of those aspects out, are we really doing that person a service? No. Okay, so if you came in to, to, to see me and your issue was anxiety, I'm anxious all the time. When you came in, would you introduce yourself as anxiety? No, definitely not. No, your name's Alec, correct? So you're, you're a human being who happens to have an issue. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, so, so apparently you're Alyssa, mm-hmm. a beautiful, pure spirit, who maybe happens to have some issues in their life, all right? Mm-hmm. So quite often what we do, Alec, is we, rather than with when we have these strong emotions, when we have these strong thoughts, when we have these feelings, what's our natural tendency to do? To struggle. To struggle. If someone comes up behind you and grabs you around with a bear hug, what's our natural tendency? Kind of to fight back. To fight back, to struggle. To struggle, absolutely. So in in martial arts, what they teach you is when someone grabs you from behind in a bear hug, rather than struggle, they ask you to become limp and slip out of it. Is that correct? So quite often what we do is we, we struggle in life, do we not? Yes. Can you think of a time where, where you've struggled? Absolutely. For sure. And uh, what we do is we develop coping skills, do we not, Alec? Yeah. What are some coping skills that people use? Um, you know, kind of distract themselves from what's going on, maybe go exercising. or Sometimes, uh, sometimes these coping skills are uh, perhaps a little bit uh, not the most healthy choices. What are, what, are some yeah. of, what are some of the coping strategies that you've seen people use? Drugs and alcohol are some common ones here. Sure, absolutely. And another one, did you ever use avoidance? Was there ever things mm-hmm. that you just avoided? Yeah, you can't deal with them at the time, so... Ignore them. You make you make believe they're not there, right? Yeah. And, and, and however they are. So what are those that cause? They feel like they cause feelings of anxiousness. So quite often, what we do is we get involved in what we would call emotional quicksand. Emotional quicksand. Have you ever seen a movie where people would get into quicksand? Mm-hmm. And when get when people get into quicksand, what do they do? They struggle. They struggle. They fight. They fall. They fly. Right. I used to. Um, maybe perhaps I'm going to show my age a little bit. But every Saturday morning, they show Tarzan movies. Okay, Johnny Weissmuller, the whole thing, the black and white, and he guaranteed someone would be in quicksand every single episode. Every single episode. So quite often we get caught in emotional quicksand in our lives. Have you ever felt that way, Alec? Yeah. Like there was no way out. Yeah. How do, what do I do? Mm-hmm. All right. And quite often this is, and of course. Uh, Someone uh, told me that uh, these were one of my favorite things that ever existed. Okay, so uh, could you put, put them on? Absolutely. And what, are, what would these be called, Alec? Chinese finger traps. Chinese finger traps, right. So sometimes we get into a situation, correct? And when we struggle, what happens? It gets tighter and It gets tighter. tighter when we try to pull, when we try to fight our way out of it. Right, so what the, one of the things that we practice here is acceptance. Okay, so quite often what people what people get to, into the trap of thinking what they are not rather than what they are. Okay, people spend most most of their lives consumed with what am I not? What am I not? Rather than what, what am I? What am I? So when we begin to do that, what my our suggestion is is that we cease fighting anyone or anything. How do you get, how do you get out of a Chinese finger trap, Alyssa? You kind of just relax. Maybe even push your fingers together a little bit and then take one out at a time. So what that is, is what we do, we, 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 for we practice acceptance. Okay, here I am, I'm in this situation, and we need to be able to accurately describe and label the situation that we're in, the emotions and feelings that we do have. So when we do that, Alyssa, that gives them power. Mm-hmm. Would that be correct? So we, have, we, we take the power back from the emotions and the feelings. So when you have a friend, I'm sure that you've had a friend that's been caught in emotional quicksand or a a Chinese finger trap of a a 
situation. What would your suggestion for them to be now, Alec? I'd just kind of accept the situation they're in and make the best of it from, from that point instead of trying to fight back and um, kind of make some ideal situation mm -hmm. out of... You bet. You bet. So how would you, what would be your recommendations to someone who, when you say to them, let's see struggling, well, there has to be some substance and weight behind that. You just don't say, hey, you know, stop it and walk away. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you what would you suggest to them? What would be a way for them to see struggling? Well, um, like you said, step back, observe the situation, label it, say what the facts are, and mm -hmm. you know, and maybe identify your emotion towards it, and then you're gonna have to deal with it. Oh, you can't just walk away from that just from doing that. You have to deal with it, accept it, and then accept one it. thing at a time, do what you can do. One thing mindfully at a time. Absolutely. Very, very good. Very good. You've been, certainly been paying attention, <laughs> Melissa. So the idea, Alec, is that when we, what we do is we, if you walk, the next time, I'd, I really want you to do this, is when someone gets excited, maybe your fiancé, and uh, once they get excited or whatever, have you ever would stop and ask somebody, where are you at? I've never done that. Mm. If I asked you today, where, where were you at, what would you say? Uh, right here, right now. How how would you how do you know that you're right here? Um, because I can see what's going going on around me in the room. I can hear what you're saying to me. So you're participating in the moment. You can accurately label and describe everything that's in front of you. Right. So when we're, mm -hmm. the suggestion would be to when you begin to get overwhelmed, you stop, say, "Where am I? Well, I'm right here. Well, how do I know I'm right here? How do I know I'm not time traveling into this trap of depression or anxiety? You describe everything mm -hmm. that's in front of you. I mean, mm -hmm. accurately describe what's going on, what you see, the colors, the textures, the sights, the sounds that, that's going on around there. Then, mm -hmm. And then if you would ask a friend, I'd like you to do this. Okay. What time is it? It's right now. How do you know it's right now? Because I have my senses and I can tell you what I see, what I hear, and what I feel. Mm -hmm. So quite often when we ask people what time is it, what do they do? They give you the literal time. They give you the, they give you the earth time, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we don't operate in really in earth time. We operate in the now, do we not? No. We try to. Sometimes we do time travel into the future, which causes certainly a lot of anxiety, worry, and fear. Uh, and we get then we get snagged into the emotional quicksand. Then we get snagged into the trap. So my suggestion for everyone out there is to practice these practice these things in safe situations. When you go into the grocery store, you stop. You ask yourself, "Where am I at? What time is it? What am I doing here?" It, it seems silly. However, the more that this becomes a, a matter of routine, a norm for you, uh, you're not looking for a parachute up in the airplane when the when the when the motors begin to sputter. Okay, you've already prepared that. You've already prepared that parachute. So my suggestion is that, and also I'd like to make an offer for everyone out there that if you would. Uh, if you would like to uh, email us to Claire, uh, they'll tell you how to do that at the end of the podcast. Uh, you'll be able to reach that. We, I will send you. I will send you a Chinese finger trap. I will send a fine Chinese finger trap for everybody that uh, that would would like to have one. So until then, as always, Alec, we uh, give a free prescription. Do we not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that would be fruits, nuts, and vegetables. Unplug your television. And perhaps take up fishing, and for a truly mindful experience, we suggest that you fish without bait, which would be living a life without definitive expectations. And as always, we ask you to do a kindness for another, and particularly do a kindness for yourself. Until then, namaste. It's been so nice to be with you. <music>